Good morning and welcome to Monday Mornings with Margie. Hope you all had a good week last week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today I'm privileged to have a good friend of mine um, who does amazing work uh, in the community, Jen Derringer. And I'm going to let Jen talk a little bit about uh, her organization that she works at and then also what her role is there. So thanks for being with us. It's absolutely my pleasure. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jennifer Derringer. I am a managing attorney of the Berkshire, Hampshire, and uh, Franklin County offices of Community Legal Aid. Community Legal Aid is a uh, civil legal aid organization that helps low-income folks um, with a variety of civil legal issues. We do things like help with housing, help people secure and maintain affordable housing, we work on benefits, helping people secure things like social security disability, um, SNAP, food stamp benefits, TAFDC, veterans benefits. Um, we work with folks who are experiencing domestic violence and need safety um, and need help from the courts getting things like restraining orders, divorce, uh, child support orders, custody orders. We work with the elderly on a variety of civil legal issues that affect elderly folks. And we also do education work for, um, for students who have um, special needs and need help securing an IEP or um, other kind of support from the school. So we are in uh, all four Western counties, Berkshire, Hamden, Hampshire, and Franklin, as well as Worcester County. So we serve Central and Western Massachusetts. Okay. So I, I didn't realize all the different things you did myself. So that's like huge. Um, so do other, um, so I guess my two questions are, where do you exist? Like where are some of your sites within Massachusetts? And then also if somebody was listening to this from a different state, you know, we have sites in Connecticut, we have sites in Iowa, we're expanding throughout New England. Uh, so I guess I'm looking for what do we have in Massachusetts and then what exists uh, in other states? Sure. The good news is that there are legal aid, civil legal aid programs all across the, the country in every state. Um, every state has a, a slightly different system in the way they do things and each legal aid program might have slightly different priorities and might be working on different issues. But the kind of issues that I described that we work on is are, are pretty much going to be the same that every legal aid program is working on very basic safety, security, health issues that folks are struggling with. Um, and I did want to mention another um, category within the, the benefits realm. We also help people, and this may be um, for folks that are listening this morning, um, we help people secure uh, health insurance, health, health insurance benefits, um, both on the state and federal level um, for elders and for folks who are disabled. Um, that's a huge piece of what we do as well. So um, in, uh, we have uh, physical offices, which of course are not open at the moment because of COVID, but we right. are still do we're still doing intake and we are still fully open and just functioning remotely. But we have offices in Springfield, Worcester, Northampton and Pittsfield. And then we have a variety of uh, satellite offices as well. We have one in Fitchburg, one in Holyoke, North Adams, um, and uh, Greenfield. Um, and so when we are open for business, those offices are open. Folks can walk in and get services. Uh, but we are always open um, online. Folks can apply for services at communitylegal.org they can call our number. The local number is 413-584-4034. And if you go to communitylegal.org, there's a 1-800 number that folks can call as well. Can people call in, maybe they don't need like your full services, but they need information to, you know, more of a consultation type thing. Does, does that exist or how does that work? We do not do that as much. Um, we might refer folks to some online resources that they can look at, but generally what we are helping folks with is if they have an immediate legal problem that needs to be solved. And the reason for that is just simply resources. Sure. Um, we are a nonprofit and we don't have, um, so we don't have enough funding really to even help everybody who comes to us with a live legal issue. I, we turn away, I think, roughly half of the folks that apply for our services just because we don't, we have limited resources. 
Okay. And I should also note, just to be clear, that we help folks that are low income. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is up to 200% of the federal poverty guidelines. There are a couple of areas where the guidelines don't apply. Um, for elders, uh, we don't have any income guidelines. And for anybody who has experienced um, a, a, a crime, who's a victim of a crime, and that is somehow connected to their legal problem, there are no income guidelines for those folks either. Oh, okay. So, you know, I would, I think I have to discuss COVID right now, um, seeing we're in the midst of a worldwide pandemic. Um, and I'm curious uh, how, it, number one, are you all dealing with cases related to COVID? And I guess for people out there um, who are struggling with things related to rent and paying bills due to COVID, so sort of what is the, the recourse they have? What are their options right now in, in a situation like this? Because I know it's the case for a lot of people. Um, even people who maybe weren't struggling financially are now finding themselves struggling financially. Yeah, these are good questions. So we are seeing an uptick in cases in three specific areas, and I'll talk about each one of them. Um, the first is special education, um, IEPs for students. With the schools having been closed since mid-March and moving to remote learning, a lot of students have uh, the additional challenges of getting the services they used to get in school remotely. Mm -hmm. um, and you know that will continue over the summer and may continue into the fall as well. Mm -hmm. So we are open and available to be helping families and students make sure that they're getting the services that they have already have in place sure. remotely or building in services for students who may be experiencing new special needs with the schools. Mm -hmm. um, second, we are seeing, of course, a huge uptick in folks who are applying for unemployment. Mm -hmm. And the good news here is there's additional monies available through the state and through the federal government for folks who are unemployed. Um, there's a pandemic unemployment insurance, which is a whole different category of unemployment. And then there's the traditional unemployment. So we are seeing, um, we have always represented folks who have applied for unemployment and gotten denied. We will represent them at hearings. So those folks should continue to call us. But we're also experiencing folks who are really struggling with just applying for benefits. Everything's online now. And so you have to have access to a computer. You have to have access to the internet. You have to have good connectivity. Mm -hmm. And also folks are struggling uh, with language, uh, with applying online if English is not their first language. Sure. We have started a new program to address these challenges. And we are helping folks who are struggling with just applying for unemployment do that. We will get on the phone with them and we will help them fill out the application online. Um, That's great. So folks, yeah, it's really, we have had to pivot in a couple of different ways to help, and I'll talk about housing in a moment, to talk about how we've pivoted there to really address the COVID specific issues that are coming up for people in addition to the regular work that we've been doing. Um, in the housing arena, there have been enormous changes as you referenced. Folks are really struggling to pay bills now. One of them is rent. There is a really a good piece of news here in Massachusetts and in many other states as well. Um, we have what's called an eviction moratorium. Um, and what that means is that the courts are not allowing landlords to file evictions during this time unless what they are, unless what they are, are called e essential evictions. And an essential eviction is something where health and safety is really at risk. Um, so there might be some kind of a criminal, criminal activity at a complex and the landlord's alleging that the tenant committed some sort of crime that's putting other tenants at risk. The great news is that non-payment cases for eviction are not considered essential evictions so that folks have, who have fallen behind on rent right now are not going to be evicted. The, the courts will not let those evictions go forward. Mm -hmm. the, the less good news is that at some point that moratorium is gonna lift. Sure. We don't know exactly when, we think it's probably gonna be the end of the summer okay. um, in Massachusetts. Yeah. And then, those, then landlords will be able to bring those eviction cases into court. A little bit of good news here, and this is across the state, there are various programs um, that will help folks pay rent get, and get caught up. 
in Western Massachusetts, Wayfinders down in Springfield is working with folks in Hampshire and Franklin County, uh, sorry, Hampshire and Hamden counties. Mm -hmm. um, in Berkshire County, it's uh, Berkshire Regional Housing. And up in Franklin County, it's Franklin uh, County Regional Housing. There's a pot of money called RAFT. And that has always existed to help people pay off rent arrearage. So when they've fallen behind in their rent, there's an additional pot of money specific to COVID related um, rental issues, folks who have recently lost their job because of COVID. And that money is available to help people as well. And so folks can, um, the easiest thing to do is, is Google rent arrearage and, and that, will that information will come up. Um, and, that, and that folks, should think about trying to get that assistance now rather than falling further behind in their rent. Sure. Um, and if folks have lost their jobs because of COVID, they should absolutely apply for unemployment because they should be entitled to get that and that will help them pay rent. Sure. And the last thing I want to say about um, rent is if, if tenants are living in subsidized housing, public housing, or they have Section 8 vouchers, if they have a reduction in income, they're also entitled to a reduction in rent. So they should get in touch with their landlords right away and let them know that they've had a reduction in rent and then their rent will also reduce. Hmm. And if tenants are struggling with that process, if, the, if their landlords are not reducing the rent and recalculating the rent, that is also something that we can help folks with. Great. Um, the last thing I want to say about housing, the courts are closed to the public right now, but they are doing remote hearings by Zoom and by telephone. And so if, if tenants are experiencing issues, if they are experiencing landlords threatening to lock them out of their apartment without process, which is completely illegal, or they're having some sort of an emergency situation with utilities, they can't access utilities, or the landlord's threatening to shut off their utilities, that's also something that we can help them with and they should feel free to call us. That's great. It's great. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people, you know, even including myself, uh, and I'm a social worker <laughs> uh, by training, you know, that don't even know this, you know, exists. So. I'm yeah. And it's really been, it's been happening in real time. The, the moratorium was just passed about a month ago and people are still sorting that out and figuring it out. And I should say also that if, if, te if tenants are facing an essential eviction, if the landlord is trying to evict them right now and the case is moving forward, we are definitely um, able and willing to help with those cases as well. Okay. Wow. So kind of talking about that and maybe moving into the mental health realm, um, you know, uh, one of my questions would be uh, for people, so we have COVID, but then we have people who separate from COVID um, are struggling with mental health issues like depression and anxiety. And for those people with COVID, it's like a double whammy. Um, but I guess I'm curious for you and your experience, what are some of the um, things you have seen come your way uh, related to people who are struggling with mental health issues that you've been able to help or assist them or advice you might give them so they are, they're aware of that? That's a great question. What we see come up uh, quite often are folks who are experiencing depression and or anxiety and are just having challenges dealing with day-to-day -day responsibilities. And one of the major day-to-day -day responsibilities is is staying current in rent, making sure you're paying rent on time and in full. And if you're living in subsidized housing, responding to you know, any number of requests from your landlord for more information about your income. Those, those happen all the time. And folks, you know, I think one way that folks really struggle with depression and anxiety is to not be checking mail regularly and not be responding to mail regularly because it's just, it's too overwhelming. Yeah. In, in, when cases like that make their way through the court, and, and again, it, that wouldn't happen now because of the moratorium on evictions, sure. but in, you know, in non-COVID times, we see all the time folks who, um, who are capable of, uh, you know, who can pay the rent, have the money to pay the rent, and you know, should be able to meet any of the other requirements of the tenancy, but are really struggling because of depression and or anxiety. In those cases, the law is very protective. Um, and we do this all the time. We can make what's called a reasonable accommodation argument to the landlord, where we say, this person is struggling from a disability, uh, anxiety, depression. 
they need some time um, and some support to get through this. It might be that they need somebody to help pay their, their rent every month. They might need a rep payee or somebody else to help them with that. They might need therapy to get through their depression and anxiety. They may need your services. They may need some kind of mental health treatment to get, to get them back to a stable situation. Sure. And what we will do is ask the landlord or the landlord's attorney to hold off on the eviction to give them some time to get the help and support that they need to get them back to a stable place where they can start doing what they need to do. Mm -hmm. um, and the law, like I said, the law is very strong in this arena and we are almost always able to get agreements with landlord attorneys, at least in Western Massachusetts. Um, most landlords don't want to evict people. They just want to see the problem solved. Mm -hmm. And what we can do in addition to making the legal arguments to get the landlord to hold off on the eviction, we can also connect folks with all sorts of services to get them to a more stable place. So if folks are experiencing that, they should reach out. We, when we are uh, in non-COVID times, legal <laughs> aid is in court on eviction day. Uh, whenever that is, it's a different day for every county. Um, <clears throat> so folks can call for our services in advance or they can just connect up with us the day of their eviction case. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, our, land, our housing attorneys are in court and willing to help that very day. And like I said, we are almost always able to come to agreements with landlords. And when we can't, we can make the arguments to the judge and to the judge is very sympathetic um, to those kind of arguments, as long as folks are, are willing to get the help that they need. Sure, absolutely. Well, that's, you know, it's great to hear you know, that, um, that it is as protective as it is, because I wouldn't have necessarily thought <laughs> um, yeah. that that was the case. Uh, so it uh, makes me feel a lot better knowing that that is an option and that people are looking out uh, for people who are struggling with mental health issues and, and the law is sort of on their side in that way. Absolutely. And, you know, I think that people are, people feel the way you do as well. I think I'll, I worry that a lot of people get eviction notices and, and think there's nothing I can do. I need to move out. Yeah. And that, you know, that if, if one message gets through this morning, it, it is that, <laughs> that folks should not feel like it's hopeless or helpless, that we can help. Um, we can connect them up with services like the kind of services you all provide. Sure. Um, to get them some support and stability, and we can work with them to get them back into a successful tenancy. All, all is not lost when they get the eviction notice. They have lots of rights under the law That's and great. lots of people who are available to, to help them get back on their feet. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing uh, this information. I think it's really important information, and I'm happy to be able to get it out to people who are, you know, tuning in to our podcast or our YouTube channel. Um, you know, I think this is really important information and maybe sometime I can have you come back and you can sure. talk about different aspects uh, of the other work that you're doing separate from the housing end of things. So absolutely. I'd be happy to do that. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, thank you all for listening uh, to Monday mornings with Margie. I hope you have a great week and be well.